This is Kavalapara, a village in the South Indian state of Kerala. At 7.55 p.m. on August 8th, in a matter of minutes, Rajesh saw his entire village disappear before his eyes. Kavalapara landscape started from here. This la uh, sand is there. The 500 meters they are going. Over the next two weeks, Rajesh helped identify the bodies of his friends and neighbours. Of the 59 victims, 11 are still missing. Uh, this is Vishnu's house, the military person, one Vishnu. Vishnu and eight family uh, died in here. All persons are crying. When I speak one person, they are cried. In th these villagers are, live like a one family. Uh, uh, in, um, I think that my family member is dead. Kavalapara is not the only village which has been impacted by the torrential monsoon rains. This year, nearly 24 landslides devastated northern Kerala. According to Tushar, a forest ecology researcher, it's not just the rain that is responsible for this tragedy. We are in one of those uh, 21 quarries in Kavalapara. Around 10 kilometers there are, there are 21 quarries. We are, we are doing uh, mining activities there. Because of that, uh, we, we know that there are there, there were many trees in this area and they hold many soil. At that time, when the, uh, these trees are fell off, at that time, this uh, root have no more, uh, they can't hold the soil. In the last 40 years, Kerala has lost 50% of its forest cover. Instead, there are now quarries and buildings. In 2011, a panel of experts led by Velayudan Sajeev warned the government about the fragility of this region. The Gargu committee uh, identified two, three dif different zones, ecological census zone one, two, and three. And it suggested that the quarrying should not happen in zone one and two. You can see how the quarries are distributed in each of the uh, zones. Each of these red spots are uh, quarries, uh, granite quarries. The areas marked in green are considered highly sensitive. Kavalapara is one of them. Despite the committee's warnings, the quarries continue to operate openly. In the last two years, nearly 600 people have died due to floods. One third of them have died in landslides alone. The only thing which we can do against uh, global climate change is to make our local habitats extremely healthy. So now the problem with quarrying is that it makes uh, our habitat unstable which makes uh, uh, even slight changes in rainfall makes it into a big tragedy. Almost everywhere in Kerala, deforestation and mining are being done to build more roads and buildings. It's not just mountains that have been destroyed. Riverbeds too are being mined for sand, a crucial ingredient to make concrete. In southern Kerala, nearly 75% of the sand mining is controlled by the local mafia. Raj Mohan has spent 10 years investigating and exposing them. Let me show you what the original riverbed used to look like. You see over there where the boat is, the Nayar River was like that, not very wide. Now look, it's been widened to a full kilometer. 30 years ago, this riverbed was home to an entire village. All over Kerala, we have to fight this so-called sand mafia. It's because of them and their illegal extractions that we're facing all these disasters, these landslides and floods. Here, the resistance against the sand mafia was led by an 87-year-old woman, the last person to leave this village. This over there used to be Granny Darley's house there, on this small island. She lived here until last year. Last year, the flood destroyed this bridge, Dali's only access to her house. With that, the 30-year-long resistance ended, and she had to abandon the land she was raised on. Today, Raj Mohan travels 20 kilometers to visit Dali, who is currently staying with some distant relatives. Do you remember? It was back then when you had just rebuilt the bridge. Yes, I remember. I want to return to my land. That's where I want to be buried. This is where my great-grandfather rests. But the criminal groups continue to extract the sand. It's become like gold. Dali wants to file a lawsuit against members of the sand mafia who destroyed her land but they control nearly 400 rivers in India and are growing more powerful each day.